welcome to Music City Kids. My name is Tamara with Love in a Big World and I'm so glad you're here. Today we're talking about moderation. Moderation is keeping a balance, avoiding extremes. And did you know that when you and I practice moderation, we can actually protect our land and the animals in our big world? Mm-hmm, that's right. So we're going to be talking about that and I'm so excited because we're living in a crazy world with lots of climate change. So we've got to do our part to make this world a safe place for all. All right, up first we've got Dr. J-Pop with some animal walks. Hey guys, have you ever tried to walk like an animal? I know that sounds crazy. Maybe some of you guys have done it in school but we're going to try what we call animal walks today, okay? We're gonna choose four of them. Are you ready? The first animal we're gonna walk like is a bear. So you're going to put your hands on the ground, try to keep your legs straight, and you're just going to walk forward, okay? If you wanna make it a little harder, because I love a challenge, you can keep your bottom low and you can try to keep a flat back when you walk like a bear, okay? Next one we're gonna do is walking like a duck. So, I want you to go down on the ground and you're going to put one foot in front of you, keep that foot flat, bring the other one forward, okay? So your duck walk is going to look like this. Okay? Got your bear walk. Got your duck walk. Now we're going to do your crab walk. Okay? Now this one, we're actually going to go backwards. So you're going to turn around, put your hands behind you, put your bottom up in the air, and you're going to try and walk backwards. Make sure you don't run into anything, okay? So we've got our bear walk, we've got our duck walk, and we've got our crab walk. The last walk we're gonna do is a penguin walk. What you're gonna do is rock all the way back on your heels, keep your toes up, put your hands by your side, and while you keep your toes up, you're going to walk like a penguin, okay? So I taught you the bear walk, the duck walk, the crab walk, and the penguin walk. You can see I'm sweating. So those are some good and fun movements that you can do to get your juices going, okay? Have fun with them. Back to you, Tamara. And here's a health tip from our very own anthropologist, Dr. E. Hey, Tamara and friends. Well, we did something new this week in my family. And the something new that happened to my family was that my niece and nephew got to move from sitting in the back seat of the car to sitting now on the front seat of the car in the passenger side. And that's a really big deal in my family because it means that my niece and nephew are now tall enough and that they're now old enough and that they're now big enough to no longer just have to sit in the back seat of the car but now they can enjoy the front seat of the car as well. And so that's a really big deal. And it reminds me of an anthropologist by the name of Arnold Van Gannett. And Van Gannett, he went all over the world looking at different cultural groups. And what he recognized in these groups was that all of these groups have different ways of being able to mark moving from an old stage of life to a new stage of life. And that when we move from one stage of life to a new stage of life, oftentimes we have a celebration that we recognize or acknowledge that the person has moved from an old stage of life to a new stage of life. And so we have lots of rites of passage, and I'm sure there are probably rites of passages that you have participated in or that you're looking forward to. And so what are some of those new stages of life and those celebrations that you're looking forward to? Well, they include things like moving from one grade to another grade, from moving from third grade to fourth grade, or from fifth grade to sixth grade. 
they include things like moving from elementary school to moving to middle school or from middle school to high school. For you, you might be looking forward to at some point in time, you're going to graduate from high school and you're going to have a graduation ceremony. And so all of those are what we call rites of passage. And Van Gannett recognized that those rites of passage are really important because they help us to be able to acknowledge and recognize the fact that we move from one stage of life to a new stage of life. And that when we move from an old stage of life to a new stage of life, not only do we see ourselves differently, but the people around us see us differently as well. And so when we have our bar mitzvahs, or we have our quinceañeras, or we likewise have our rites of passage ceremonies, they mean that we are no longer oftentimes kids anymore, but that instead we're being now recognized by our communities and by our families as being adults or being up and coming young people, people who can take responsibility not only for themselves, but also take responsibility and to make the world a better place. And so those rites of passage are really important. And so anytime we do something new and we move from one stage of life to a new stage of life, it's something worth celebrating. And it's something worth celebrating because it means that we're continuing to grow and we're continuing to develop. And when we continue to grow and we continue to develop, that's a wonderful thing. And so this week, I want you to think about what's something new that's happened in your life, something new, a new stage of life that you're looking forward to. And if you haven't already celebrated it, think about celebrating it. And likewise, ask the people around you what it means for you to move from this old stage to this new stage. And when we do that, and when we celebrate that we're growing, that's a wonderful way of being able to share love in a big world. And so until next time, do something new and keep growing. See you later. I'm so excited because we've got Miss CJ back with a history lesson just for you. Hi guys, welcome back to Miss CJ's class. And as always, I'm Miss CJ and I'm so excited to see you. So let's jump right into this. Today, I wanted to have a little bit of fun with you because dun, 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 we're in the fall and it's one of my favorite seasons. And it's also one of the favorite seasons in this beautiful state of Tennessee. That's right. We are in Tennessee. I want to know, do you remember what Tennessee touches? Now, remember, Tennessee touches eight states. Remember, we touch Virginia. We touch South Carolina. We touch Kentucky. We touch Georgia. We touch Alabama. We touch Mississippi. We also touch Arkansas. And we also touch Missouri. We touch eight different states so we can never get lonely if you think about it tennesseans can never get lonely so that's a really cool and fun fact about tennessee tennessee borders eight states now here's something else cool that i bet you didn't know country music was not found in nashville tennessee it actually wasn't the birthplace of country music is actually bristol and here's another fun fact about bristol there are two bristols there is Bristol, Virginia and Bristol, Tennessee. And they border like right there, like kind of like boom, right there. It's so cool. If you ever go on a road trip, you should check that out. Or if you ever look at the Geico commercial, they'll see a Bristol, Virginia and Bristol, Tennessee. If you hear a little noise in the background, that's my puppy. It's because I'm not paying attention to him. So here's another cool and fun historical fact about Tennessee. Do you know what we're called? Do you know the nickname of Tennessee? <laughs> that's right, we're called the Volunteer State. And that's because Tennessee sent the majority of its people in the War of 1812 to fight in the front line. And we sent so many that they were like, boy, they are really volunteering out of this state. And every time there is a natural disaster or something, haven't you noticed that Tennessee is? Like we're always helping and, and doing the most for each other in all, all parts of the counties which I think is a great thing about Tennessee. So we are called the volunteer state because we sent the most troops to war in the war of 1812. So that was just like a great fun fact. Now, here's something else great and interesting. During that war, there was a colonel who was fighting in that war. He later became president. At the end of this, I want you to tell me who you think it is. Do you think it was Andrew Johnson or Andrew Jackson? 
That's what you need to find out. Who was the colonel? Who was the captain who was leading that? That later became president of the United States and he's from Tennessee. Now, here's a clue. There are three people. Polk, Johnson, Jackson. It's up to you to figure that out. Let's get on to our next fun fact. Here's one of my favorite fun facts and my favorite historical facts about Tennessee. We are home to the grocery store. There was a time when you could not go to the grocery store and actually go and put your food in a basket and take it to the front counter and pay for your food. You actually had to wait on the clerk to go and get your dry goods and your items. And guess what? There was a man in Memphis, Tennessee, Piggly Wiggly, and he changed that. And it went from Memphis to Chattanooga to Nashville to all over. So you got to thank Tennessee for the modernization of, of the grocery shopping. Now, let's move on to one more fun fact. Tennessee has a lot of good things, guys. But one of the best things that it has, Tennessee is known to some of the best food. We got Memphis barbecue. Did you know that Mountain Dew was made right here in Nashville, Tennessee? Yeah, it was made as a mixer for a drink. And someone said, you know what? I think, I think that we are just going to do a soda instead. And that's how Mountain Dew came out. You should research more into that. Now, last one, cotton candy. That's right. Cotton candy comes right from Nashville, Tennessee, baby. Tennessee got the food. Tennessee got the food. Now, I had to throw something because my puppy wants to play. The last fun fact that I want to tell you guys about Tennessee is the name and exactly where it came from. So Tennessee actually came from Tennessee, T-A-N-A-S-I, which kind of means it's it's no it's not a real meaning. It's a Cherokee word because this was all Native American and um, land. There were Sioux, there were Cherokee, there were Tipaho, there were so many Indians here. Um, I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee, and our one of our founders of our city, John Ross, was a Cherokee Indian. He actually was. So the Tanasi actually, it could mean meeting rock. It could mean bend at the river. And that's where Chattanooga comes from because we are on a river bend. Tennessee is a natural forming state. It is one of the most beautiful states that you will ever be able to travel through. So for this history lesson, I just wanted to share some fun, fun facts about Tennessee. I hope you research them. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section. Miss CJ loves you. But if I'm right, let me know some one, four facts. Bleh. And if I'm right, let me know some more fun facts that you want to learn about. Hold on. Say until next time, we will see you later. Say bye-bye. Here's one of my favorite new artists, Ava Page. You can find all of her music at avapagemusic.com. When I was five years old, my best friend had four golden paws. Play outside for hours, tracking mud all through the halls. I can still remember when my mama sat me down. She said, It's alright, she is up in heaven now. And I cried, said, Why? Mama held me tight and told me. It's the beauty and the pain and all the things that make life work. It's hard to understand all the plans down here on earth. It won't always make sense, the good, the bad, the wrong, or right. But honey, that's just life. Down the road I met a boy with dark brown eyes We sit and talk for hours as the time would fly on by 
for today. Check out Rachel Carson, Clearing the Way for Environmental Protection. Rachel Carson's research showed how chemicals were impacting the water and the land and hurting animals and humans. Her work led to the development of the Environmental Protection Agency, which is an agency that is still working today to keep us all safe and healthy. So as you read this book, I want you to think about this hero and how her work has impacted your life. Think about what she discovered on land and in the sea. What was she asking chemical companies and governments to do in order to keep us all safe? Rachel Carson was a voice of moderation. For what important cause can you be a voice of moderation today? You know, the story of Rachel Carson reminds me of a current environmental hero. Have you heard of Greta Thunberg? She's from Sweden, and she's a 17-year-old who is standing up against climate change. So, like Rachel and Greta, let your voice be heard about how we can protect our land and our animals. And you know, it might be simple things like recycling or composting or making sure that you're not just using single serving packages, but you're using a reusable water bottle, things like that. Small things that you can do to make a difference in our big world. Hi everybody. So today I want to tell you about our stingrays and you can see we've got a few of them behind me over here. Stingrays are actually part of the shark family. So they all come from what we call cartilaginous fish, okay? And that's because they don't have true skeletons, so they don't have bones like you and me. Instead, their skeletons are made up of cartilage. Now, we also have cartilage as humans, that's our ears and our noses, okay? So with our stingrays that you see swimming around here, we have three stingray species, but there's a variety of stingrays you find off the South African coast. Here at the aquarium, we've got short-tailed stingrays, and they're one of the largest stingray species. Our male over here that I'll point out when he comes around can get to about two meters. So from one side of his wing to the other will be about two meters in length. And from his 
On top of his snout, right through to his tail, he'll get to about four meters. You can see him now just in the background over there, but I'll show you how it works. Another stingray species we have here is our eagle rays, and they're quite different. They actually are open water stingray species, so they don't like to sit too much on the exhibit or the ocean floor. And then we also have a honeycomb stingray, and she's got a beautiful pattern on her back, and that's because that species actually comes from our tropical waters. So she has this really cool camouflage on her back that she uses to blend in with the coral reefs. Now, stingray species, they actually have a barb on their tail, and that barb is used for defense. So we don't have to be too worried about it, because they'll only really use it if they feel extremely threatened or cornered. So here at the aquarium, we never corner them, and when we feed them, we work with them really, really carefully. Our stingrays, their mouth is also on the underside of their body, and their gills are also on the underside of the ear, so they have five lines, and that's how they're able to breathe. So they pull water through what we call spiracles, which are these two holes on the side of their head, and then they flush the water up over their gills, and that's how they get oxygen, and that's how they're able to breathe in the water. All right, we've got some girls telling us more about moderation. Take it away, ladies, with Bye Kids, Four Kids. Look at a big world! Bye Kids, Four Kids! Bam. Hi, I'm Justice. And I'm Josiah. And I'm Jessica. And we're here with a little bit of a girl to talk to you about moderation. There needs to be a balance between screens and life. For example, spend less time on your phone and more time with family. Or another example is, you know you have to go to dance class at 6 o'clock, so you have about two hours, and you want to hang out with your friends, do your homework, and go on your phone. So figure out that balance between all three of those. We're loving a big world. Bye kids. Four kids. All right, we all love art. It's a great way to express our thoughts and feelings and emotions. So I have an idea. As you're doing your projects with Miss Luana, take a picture and share in the comments below. We'd love to see what you're up to. Hey there, how's it going? Good to see you guys. You know, the fall, as I told you, is my favorite time of the year. I can just feel it in the air. The temperature's getting cooler. The leaves are starting to turn colors and it's just the best time of the year, I think. So I've got a craft for you today that's gonna help you get into the fall feeling, okay? All right, let's get into it. All right, for this project, you need coffee filters, food coloring, your paintbrush and some basic brown paint, and a bowl of water. Take your yellow food coloring, put plenty in the bowl of water, and then take about two or three coffee filters, and I want you to carefully dip just the tips of the filter into the water. If you dip it too deep in the bowl, your entire filter is going to be soaking wet because filters are very absorbent. They soak up a lot of water, in other words. So flatten that out, get your brown paint, and you're just gonna fill in the middle circle. And you see how I'm doing like these little tap strokes, kind of dashes? I want some of the white to peek through. I don't want it completely brown in the middle. So it gives it a little more realistic kind of feel to it also. So tap, tap, tap all the way around in the middle circle. And then we're gonna put this one to the side. Have you guessed yet what it's gonna be? Okay, we're gonna do a second one just like it. And be careful, just the tips into that bowl of water, okay? And then the same thing, you're gonna flatten it out onto your paper and then get your brown paint. I had to grab my green, I forgot I need that for later. Putting a little green paint onto my paper bag. All right, and then we're gonna fill in the brown circle like we did a moment ago with the first one. Flatten it out, tap, 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 all the way around the middle circle, okay? All right, just get that good and filled in. Let some of the white peek through. And then we're gonna take some craft glue and we're going to glue these onto our, whatever you have, cardboard. I have a paper bag. You can use some um, construction paper and kind of overlap them a little bit. And then I'm gonna take my green paint and I'm gonna draw a stem. Yep, you guessed it. 
These are sunflowers and we see these a lot in the fall. All right, sunflowers making their stem and there you have it. Hey, this is Morris Jamison from Pray and Exercise. And I want to talk to you today about the importance of, uh, let's see, balance. See how hard that was? Um, balance. Balance is a very important thing in our lives. The balance of eating healthy, the balance of treating your friends right, treating your family right, the balance of going to school, playing sports. Life is a, is a balancing act. All right, so I wanna show you a couple of exercises that require balance. One of them is a lunge, all right? Lunge, lunge, all right? Balance, all right? Squat, lift the leg, squat, lift the leg, all right? Balance, all right? And standing on one leg requires balance. Standing on the other leg requires, whoa, balance. <laughs> all right, so listen. If you don't get anything else out of what I am saying to you today, I want you to understand that although balance is a challenge, balance is an important part of living a healthy life. All right? So this is Morris Jameson for Pray and Exercise. Have an amazing rest of the day, an amazing rest of this year. Bye now. Guess what? I want to tell you a secret. I live on a farm. Mm -hmm. I moved to a farm this summer and I love it. Each morning I wake up to the glory of the sunshine, the fog on the lake, the horses, the geese, sometimes some skunks and possums. I'm not really fond of them, but you know what I've learned? I've learned how important it is to share the land with these other creatures and how much I get and grow from sharing space with them. I know that might seem odd, especially if you live in the city. I lived in the city for most of 20 years, but I'll tell you there's something really special about communing with nature. And in order for us to have these special experiences outside, we've got to take care of our planet. And that's practicing moderation. Remember, keeping a balance and avoiding extremes with our waste is not just about us, but it's about others. Not only now, but in the future. I don't know about you, but I want my kids and grandkids to be able to enjoy God's creatures and God's beautiful creation as much as I am right now living on the farm. So think about that. You know, educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. That's what Aristotle taught thousands of years ago. And that's why here on Music City Kids, we are committed to helping you grow strong in mind, body, and heart. So think about what you can do today to do right by the land and by the animals who share this planet with us. Thanks again for spending part of your day with us here on Music City Kids, and we'll see you. Soon.